Well, hello, and here we are at day seven of the nine candles, and Danny's lucky number seven. Lucky number seven. For those Love of it. you who don't know Danny Shea, he's a talented, brilliant card reader and psychic Thanks. person of all sorts. He has the best hair on anywhere, you know. And so <laughs> before before we go to the glamour of Danny, we're going to go light the candles and make sure I have my meditation in front of me. I do not have this meditation memorized, so. Gosh, I have it. Yes. Well, all the readers who came to read with me have it. So they kind of, theoretically, they're supposed to know what we're talking about. I have it theoretically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we're going to shift over to the nine blue candles. And I haven't done it for the last couple of days. This stone is angelite, and it's really a much more blue stone because I have the dark blue behind it. Can't really see it. But angelite is a stone that connects us back into our bodies, connects us back into the world. And it's a lovely, lovely, lovely uh, stone. And that was given to me by a friend. And we're going to start the um, meditation now. The act of lighting these candles serves as a metaf metaphorical beacon, beacon, guiding our spirits to the next level of existence and fostering a deeper connection with the universe. This blue light special upgrade, which is my name for what's going on right now, mm -hmm. signifies a transformative experience where our spirits begin become a catalyst for strengthening universal connections. During this ritual, this candle one, during this ritual, I got smart. I got it on a rolling table so I don't burn myself. Um, Perfect. We focus our intentions on a, our personal growth, our spiritual enlightenment, and the aligning of our energies with the natural rhythms of the planet. It's time for introspection, envisioning our desired future, seeking harmony with the world around you, a time to celebrate the growth and balance of the collective. And when we light the seventh candle, we're embracing this ritual. We're acknowledging the interconnectedness of life on earth and the channeling. You can't do two things at once. Okay. And the channeling that awareness to elevate our own spiritual journey. It's a beautiful way to celebrate and embrace the cyclical nature of existence while seeking personal and collective growth. And so we're at seven, just two more to go. Two more to go. So, you know, think about your intentions and think about what you want to do and how you want this to work. And now we're going to see how Danny wants it to work. How do I want it to work? And it's, well, here, here's what has been in my awareness for the last couple of days, because we just went through this, this new moon energy. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the rituals um, that some people led were, I mean, super powerful of letting go and bringing things in. And one of the things that I heard was um, just switching off what you don't want, like it's an app on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, and he was saying, you know, it's that easy. And then switching what you do want, just hitting the button and say, I do want this app open. Right. I do want this abundance opened. And so many times I think we... Um, struggle and try to make it too difficult. And it's really, really easy. Um, not, not turning on the TV, not watching the negative news. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking backstage about this. 
it's it, it fills you up with the wrong sense of who you want to be. Um, thank you for mentioning how brilliant I am at pulling cards because I think they are the brilliant ones and I just get to show them. I, I used, I pulled um, five cards before I came up here. And what you just said resonates with the card. So obviously you must be the brilliant card reader. And the first card I got was intend and create. And that's what you said set your intentions and make them really, really clear. The other card I got was to remember to ask the right question, which I think it, you know, just formulate it correctly so that there's no negative aspect in the, in what we want to bring in. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we'll go, Oh, I just, I just don't want this in my life anymore. And they think that's a positive thing when they go, I don't, that's a negative, want a negative in my life. Mm -hmm. Think of what positive thing you want to bring in. And the third card that I got was illumination, which I love. We're, we're going into a whole new galactic shift with this blue light special mm -hmm. that, um, you're reminding us to tap into. And in this meditation, I thought it'd be good to pull my galactic heritage cards. I got the shamanic journey cetacean whale, and it's a parallel time stream to us. So if we go journey to whale and listen to what whale has to say in the oceans mm -hmm. number one it's a super calming place to be mm -hmm. it's all blue light mm -hmm. um and when i did that before this session i heard whales say we are in peace and so i went i don't know i go okay hang on one second whale are you talking about world or are you talking about me? And mm -hmm. Whale said both, but I was talking about world. And I go, you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, he slapped me with his whale tail, straightened me out a little mm -hmm. bit. And he said that we are in the beginnings of, of, um, of realizing peace for a long long time but we have to let go of what's not serving us mm -hmm. which is all the destruction that we're seeing so we have to go through that to see um to, to find the peace and find the peace and this is the end we're we're watching the end game of all this destruction and violence mm -hmm. and so that we can move on to peace. The last card I pulled was the last card in the deck of the Galactic Heritage. And this is Orion's Light. The blue light is coming from, I believe it's Orion. Isn't that right? Or Sirius. is it Sirius? Yeah, from Sirius. Mm -hmm. Sirius. They're in, they're in that constellation. In the constellation. So that Orion light in this emptiness card when you first look at it you go oh it, it are we going to be empty no we're we're taking we're letting go of the plurality of the universe of right and wrong and mm -hmm. we're going to a unity consciousness and it's that emptiness um of as you mentioned the fool jumping off the cliff and mm -hmm. going, we got something brand new that we can embrace um, if we jump off the cliff. Right. And it's into emptiness, but we're supported in this. Right. And we were talking about letting things go. I had years ago, I had a good friend who was a therapist. And he used to say to me, have you ever noticed that when you finally let go of something that you didn't definitely didn't need to be carrying around with you anymore. And you kept saying to everybody, 
this needs to go away from me. Why is it going away from me? It's all covered with claw marks where we held <laughs> on to it for so long, you know? And we, we, yeah, we were sitting here going, I'm letting go of this. I really am. Yeah. Right. And right. My big thing about when people say, but I'm trying to let go of that, but I'm, yeah. try, I'm really trying. Try is a word. I wish I could strike out of a vocabulary because you know, it's, I, I'll show people at my table and they say, oh, but I'm trying to get out of that relationship. Um, I'll, I'll pick up a deck of cards and I'll look at them and I'll go, I'm trying to let go of these cards. I'm going to let go of these cards. I'm, I'm trying, I'm really trying. And then you say, let go of the cards and they go, oh. Yeah. And that's kind of where we are in the planet. Where right. We're, we're getting the uh, an influx of energy and it's everywhere in the planet you know um somebody said to me who connects who keeps the ley lines connected under the ocean and i was told it was the whales mm -hmm. it's one of their jobs they go around yep. and find the loose spots yeah. and yeah get everything and the thing with the whale i mean there's so much um uh information that it, when we just tap into whale energy and wh when I was thinking about what whale said, um, I mean, they almost went through extinction and now they're coming back. Not mm -hmm. all, but mm -hmm. it, it, in, in numbers, they're coming back. And it just felt like that, that, that may be true with, us humanoids too, we may be losing a lot of numbers, but we will come back and we're going to be a better version of my, of ourselves, more aware and, um, and connected to the, the, the planet in different ways that we, um, are not connected right now. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get that from a lot of crystals you know, that, that people say, oh, it's so mean to take the crystals out of the earth and stuff. And when I'm working with them, they're going, no, we're here to help explain these vibrations. We're here to help your vibrations and you're here to help ours get stronger, get bigger, get wider. Right. Right. And we, th we think about, um, well, the, the way that, the way that I have to think about all of this that makes sense to me um the the loss of life is and in the young loss of life is that we came here for a purpose mm -hmm. and so even rocks and crystals have come here for a purpose and if they're here to bring um awareness knowledge and energy to uh the planet and we put it back as well with the positive intention that we're both helping each other and mm -hmm. it's it's um it's a soul contract i still think that there needs to be a lot of reverence and care given to when we pick up rocks and stones oh and, yeah oh and don't pick up anything in this is a true story. I had a young couple I knew and they went to the Grand Canyon and they went into the part of the Grand Canyon that was sacred land. And she saw this really pretty rock. And so she picked it up and was, you know, just think if all the millions of people took up all the rocks, there wouldn't be any left there. But it's it goes beyond that. She picked it up from a sacred space. And so she was telling me they, they share an apartment with a roommate because the couple traveled quite a bit. It was good for them to have a roommate in there. So before they even got back from their trip, the roommate said, we've been invaded by ants. <laughs> and they went ants. And they, so the management came in and <clears throat> they did what they needed to do. And everybody was doing whatever they needed to do. And the ants would go away for a few days and they'd be right back. No, yeah. no units around them had ants, just their unit had ants. So she mentioned it to me. And I said, did you pick up anything when you were in the Grand Canyon? And she said, well, 
it's this really pretty stone. I thought you'd love it because it's a really pretty stone. And I said, it belongs in the Grand Canyon. And she said, well, what the hell do I do with it now? And she was like, I'll just throw it. I said, no, don't throw it away. You got to get it back to the Grand Canyon because you're responsible. <laughs> so we found, and there is an address where you can mail things back. Oh. That you take and think and then have second thoughts about it. Yeah. And the day she got the notice, the postal notice that Stone was back in the park, the ants went away. Oh, my gosh. How cool. And I said, oh, cool. and I've heard that before. You know, people say, I always say, I go get my rocks from my rock shop and I know what happens there. And I clean them when I get them home because, you know, no telling where they've been. And, you know, and I clean all my grids and all my stones up before I mail them out to people because they carry energy. And Sure. And I've never had ants in my house. Yeah. I had a... I had an interesting story when I went to Shasta, we went to this um, mountain called Obsidian Mountain. And there's signs, don't take the obsidian because mm -hmm. if everybody took it, it wouldn't be a mountain anymore. Mm -hmm. But this is a huge mountain. Come on, what I'm going to take one, no one's going to notice. So I'm walking around, I'm going, okay, one's going to speak to me. Mm -hmm. And I go... It's going to have something green next to it. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. So I pick one up and I go, is this green? And I go, this is really a cool one. Certainly I can take this one. So I take it. I, I have it in my hand. And I'm walking around, walking around. And comes time to leave. And I go, I got to put it back. I got to put it back. I dropped it down. Um, put it, not dropped it, but I placed it back on the mountain. And I go back to the campsite, and there on the campsite, next to a rock, a, a big boulder, is a piece of a broken piece of green glass. And on that, right around it, was numerous pieces of obsidian that some kid probably picked up. And the parents mm. said, you got to leave that here. And there was my obsidian that I got to take next to that green glass. Very good. That was pretty cool. I was like, nice. So we, we just, you know, we need to pay attention to how we get stuff. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Set the it's cool. It is cool to go pull a crystal out of the ground, but you need to go to a place where that's the meaning of that place. And yeah. I live next to Arkansas. Arkansas has the most gorgeous quartz. And I, my oldest used to go with a neighbor and they would go mine uh, the quartz out of there and just some of the most gorgeous, gorgeous quartz. But that's what's supposed to happen there. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's kind of, maybe this, I'm thinking in the back of my brain and the back of my brain is not always the safest place to go without a native guide and a map. But <laughs> um, if you're thinking about what to pick up in this time of change and what to let go of in this time of change. You know, think about it like the crystals. Think about it like, does it really fit and feel right with me? I've talked to a lot of sensitive people who during this time of change when the blue light hit, they weren't feeling it. They were like, I guess, you know, so. And then when they thought about it, they said, oh, yeah, I've my thinking's changing this way and that way. But the people who are more, more stunned are some of the people who follow things I talk about. And they said, you know, I've never felt any of this stuff before. I kept hanging around thinking, maybe I'll get the right kernel and the right signal. But man, this has put me on my back. I haven't been able to sleep. I've never had those kind of symptoms before. So I keep telling people in this time of change, years ago when I used to read about once or twice a month, I'd get somebody who was, I get the cards that tell me they're psychic or they're entering into that part of their life and they're beginning to understand. And, but it would be like two a month, you know, and I read four days a week. And mm. so I did a Halloween party 
just before all the blue lights started coming in. And it's all young, building their careers, doing their thing, 30 to 40 somethings who all had a whole lot of money to buy very elaborate costumes um, or find them from somewhere. And 50% of the people I read at that got the cards that said they're awakening. I got yeah. so tired of saying that. I was like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, Y'all are waking up and that's fine. I'd rather you be awake enough to read your own stuff. And This, this um, blue light. Now, I mean, the, the first time I heard it, I was like, you know, with the three lights coming on the, the Hopi Mesas and this, just this last month, I'm, I was like, well, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to feel anything because it's in, in the Hopi, it's in Arizona mm -hmm. and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not in Arizona. And so I said, but I'll just be aware of it. I'll mm -hmm. just, just, you know, am I feeling anything? What's going on? My, um, my balance has just been off. I mean, it has, it, it, ever since I had that big bout of vertigo, mm -hmm. but this last month, it's, I've been, I'm like, am I getting vertigo again? It's just been shifting me. And th there's, there's things in my awareness that show up and I go, that's, that's not what I would have normally seen <laughs> a mm -hmm. couple of months ago. I'm seeing things that I wouldn't have seen normally. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. You know, we're, we're waking up to a, a shifting reality, a, sh um, a higher dimensionality mm -hmm. of, of sight, sound, using all the different clairs mm -hmm. um, that I, I strongly suggest that we get in tune with all those different different yes. aspects. So we need to stop and take the time to look at what it's doing to us. There was one poor young man at the Halloween party and he said, oh, no, no, that's what people like you do. You know, <laughs> he runs a pretty sizable little company. And I said, and I, by this time I'd had it, it was like getting to be 11 o'clock and I was tired of these people going, oh, it's what you do. It's not what I do. And so, and it was kind of mean, but Addie said, go for it. So that's my guide. So, <laughs> so I said to him, I said, well, what about a couple weeks ago when you were standing in the grocery store and the woman behind you was really bugging you because she was reading her grocery list out loud and you couldn't figure out what's wrong with this woman, you know? She's saying it loud enough for all of us to hear. And you kind of turned around to try and see what her deal was. And she wasn't speaking, but she was reading a list. And when you looked in her cart, you were hearing all the things you'd been hearing in your head. I said, where'd that happen from? And he looked at me and he goes, how the hell did you know that happened? And I said, because I'm one of those <laughs> funny people who's all connected. And now so are you. Yeah. <laughs> And that's not the best way to learn about being sensitive. And I'm no, you just kind of psychically bad slapped them. <laughs> reader who read way too many people one after the other. Uh, and it is it is a time to learn. And mm -hmm. it's a time to give yourself some grace. If you're not feeling it every day, then that's fine. Yeah. So consider it like when you're a kid and you got out early from school. Yay! <laughs> Right. I want to do. Right. I also think too, though, that um, I mean, if you're not feeling it and you're going, well, I, you know, I'm trying to feel, I'm trying to feel it every day. Mm -hmm. I I find that if if you set up a time to get quiet every day, mm -hmm. um, you can't run through your life doing this, that, picking up kids, dropping off kids, um, going to work, and being busy, 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 busy without setting up a half hour so that you can get quiet and and in that 30 minutes you're probably going to spend 15 or 20 minutes just settling down and so you only mm -hmm. really have five minutes of quiet um so but if you do that you'll be able to 
start listening and feeling more mm -hmm. and journaling, 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 journaling. Mm -hmm. It's key. Yeah. And it, and it really is. I've seen people who would schedule out their time to get metaphysical. And I'm like, first of all, I don't understand that because it just showed up, but um, you can, you can push yourself to a point that you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, you know, I'm going to do yoga for 15 minutes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to blank my brain. I'm going to, you know, whatever they think they want to do. The best things I ever found, I was just really trying to do something else. I guess I'm just not a good magician, but <laughs> I meant to cure something else and I got the other thing. But it is, it is a difficult, it's a difficult time if, if you want to say, but it has to be this way. You just have to let it happen. Now, right. You're going to feel it or not right. feel it. And for those of you who are lighting candles along with it, some of your answers will be almost immediate. Sometimes they'll happen halfway through the candles. Doesn't right. matter. Let's quit lighting the candles. You got to keep lighting the candles. But And sometimes, you know, you said something about, um, you know, some of this stuff comes to you when you're doing something else. Mm -hmm. it, it's a good... It, it, you know, for me, if you're so focused on one thing, sometimes you just need to shift your focus away from it and then you'll be able to see. It's like mm -hmm. those goofy pictures, you know, that mm -hmm. are all mixed up. And if you blur your eye or shift your focus, then you get to see this beautiful scene that mm -hmm. they painted. I've never been able to do that, but it's kind of like that. Just shift your focus away so you're not so intent on what you expect to see yeah i agree well do we have any other words of wisdom we can impart today on oh yes okay keep going but i don't i don't know what they are right now <laughs> okay no well we've had a real mix of people the woman that i interviewed yesterday she's not just a woman she's an old friend of mine and she's a personal angel for me and that's a very different perspective on what blue light brings into you mm -hmm. than you know talking to somebody who's may use it to read cards and may use it to do other things and right and i'm gonna we have a, two more nights we have a numerologist and an astrologer it's very, very good. good so these are so great these are so great thank you for allowing me to be on with well, you. No, I'm I'd Beautiful. Glad to have you be on here. And I really hope people will listen that there's more than one pathway to everywhere. Absolutely. And all of our disciplines at the end of the day boil down to a lot of the same stuff. We just use different instruments and different symbols and different signs to get there. Yep. And you and each of us really has our own pack of what we carry with us to help us. Yeah. Carry. Right. And um, so I'm going to go blow the candles out. Got to go back to the table. I almost burnt my hair. I didn't uh -oh. notice. That. That's a tragic loss to all of you. <laughs> all right. Left to go and... As I always remind you, as you watch the smoke waft up, that's the conclusion of our intentions and our prayers going away. And thank you for joining me, Danny, today and helping us see our way through all this. And oh, It's my pleasure. Thank you. Go visit Danny's uh, channel, which is Bathrobe to Row. And or you can just type in Danny Shea. He's now known as both things. Not just the <laughs> And I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow night, 7, the premiere. We think we fixed the premiere lead-in, so it's not the two-minute lead-in. They've shortened it so you can make a shorter one. So we're really hoping, because, man, I hate sitting through that thing. If you think you don't like it, you should be doing it. <laughs> and say okay. good night, Danny. Good night, everybody. Thank good you. Good night, everybody. Have a good day. Don't wait, wait.